On number one, what are the, what's the variable? On number one. Um, variable or variables. X. X. So X is a variable because its value varies, changes from problem to problem. And the constants are. Yeah, negative four would actually probably be a better way to think of that number. I'm going to put negative four. Constants are just the numbers. Does it say 41 Yeah. Okay. All right, number three. Explain the difference between a constant and a numerical coefficient. Uh, there's only one lesson where I talked about coefficients, and that was the book assignment when we, when we did distributive properties. Uh, but uh, what is a constant? A constant is a what? Something that stays the same, but it's a number. Yeah. Constant is a number. I wonder what the book put. Constant is any fixed number. Okay, same, same idea. Uh, do you guys remember what a coefficient was? I only mentioned it like one day, but you no. Know. Um, so when you have a term, like, which is a bunch of stuff added together, uh, like this is two different terms, a bunch of stuff multiplied together is a term. This is one term, this is the second term. The number on the front is the coefficient. So it's the... Uh, number that is multiplied in the term. Coefficient So number five, it says, okay, four. Okay, four says the product of, what did product mean? The answer. Answer in multiplication. multiplication. Product means multiply, basically. Um, and then it says three consecutive odd integers. Do you guys remember that assignment where we talked about consecutive integers and consecutive odd integers? Does anybody remember how we... Yeah, that's what consecutive means. Does anybody remember how we represented consecutive odd integers? X letters plus 2x. Yeah, the first one was like n. The next one was n plus 2. Because odds go up by 2s, right? The next one was n plus 4. Um, on those problems, we were finding like the sum of three consecutive odds is like 93 or something. But... On this one, it says the product. So how do I multiply? How do I show multiply? Times 2x. No. How would I multiply these three together? You do n times n plus 2. Yeah, but how do I show it? Like this? No, you put parentheses. Parentheses, yes. OK, because we don't want to just do n times n. We want to do n times all of this. Times all of this. It's actually so it's number four. It'd just be n plus three n. Uh, no, we haven't learned how to simplify this yet. Uh, this would be a FOIL problem. You guys might remember that from last year. Uh, we haven't gotten to that. We're not simplifying this. We're not solving it. We're just... Why does that say number... Did we just do number four? Yep. Because I know you guys wouldn't know how to do it. Probably. Number five. The sum of an angle's complement. Because that's we haven't done a lot of stuff like that, so it's okay. Okay, what did sum mean? Uh -huh. uh, so, all right. When's the last time you guys did geometry? Uh, it's either been one or two years, right? Wait, it was in seventh grade. 
you know, seventh grade, so a couple years. Uh, does anybody remember what complement meant? Complementary angles? Yes, sir. No. They add up to 90 degrees. Uh, so in a picture, they might look like this, maybe. Uh, the, the, like, those arcs. Uh, these are just to kind of show the two different angles. But two different measurements. They're two different measurements. They could, if you want to show they're the same, you put the same arc. Um, anyway, it's two angles that add up to 90. So if this angle was 40 degrees, what would this angle have to be? 50. 50. 50. Because 50. 90 minus 40 is 50. And if this angle were 30 degrees, what would the other angle be? 60. 60. What if this is x degrees? What is this angle? X. Whatever you Okay, how are we finding this angle earlier when I said 40 and 30 up here? Well, it has to be 90, 90 minus this. x. Right, 90 minus this. So if an angle is x, then its complement would be called 90 minus x together they have to make 90 and that's kind of how it works. So in this problem when they say the complement they're talking about this because we don't know what the complement is, we don't know what the angle is, but that's how you would find it. Okay so if they say the supplement of an angle, if this is x, what do you guys remember supplement? 180. 180. What would happen if instead of putting 90 minus x you just put any number below 90 but above zero and then you solve it as like it just wouldn't be a helpful way of writing it, I guess. Okay, so supplementary angles add up to 180, and go ahead. Bye. 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 She just got tired of class. Uh, uh, no, only Eleanor. She's got special privileges. Okay, special. That's 180 degrees. Okay, together they're 180. If this is x, what would this one be called, though? Y, 180 minus x. It's whatever one, the difference of 180 and x is. Okay, so this would be called the supplement of the angle. So when we're doing this problem, when they say complement, it's that. When they say supplement, it's that. Okay, so on number 5, it says the sum of. And somebody said this already, but what, what did sum mean again? Add. Adding. So the sum of the complement of an angle and its supplement. Uh, the sum of an angle's complement and its supplement. So we're not going to simplify this. So this is angle's complement plus angle's supplement. Would you guys know how to simplify that? I wonder if the book did actually. No, they just left it like that. Well, you could put your like terms together. You could do simplify. But I'm not going to. All right. Moving on. Number seven. It says evaluate each expression for each member of the domain. Negative four, two, three. What does that mean? Right. Yes. Domain just means these are the numbers that we put in. And the range is the numbers that come out, although they didn't really ask that question. So on 7, we're going to put those in to w squared minus 2w minus 1. So 6 and 7 are going to have four answers each. We're going to plug each number in. You guys might remember doing this. Okay, here's the problem though. A lot of people might miss this first one specifically because if I plug this in the calculator, it would be wrong. Does anybody know why that would be wrong? Because you can do it in your head because it would go to exponents first. Okay, yeah. When you write it like this, exponents, because exponents are first, it would square the four and then it would add the negative, which would be negative 16. But why is it not supposed to be negative 16? Because W is negative 4. Right. We're supposed to square all of W, so we're supposed to square the negative 2. And to communicate that with the calculator, it would need a parenthesis. 
But what is negative 4 squared? Positive 16. And then over here, we basically have negative 2 times negative 4, which is positive 8. By, your way, by the way, the calculator can do order of operations. It can. It should, anyway. It doesn't screw up. Um, but if you don't plug it in right, like with the parentheses on that, it, it would mess up. Now, that doesn't matter on the positives, because when you square positives, it's just going to stay positive. But on that first one, on 6 and 7, you could get it wrong. So 16 plus 8 is 24 minus 1. 23. So that's answer number 1. Then we're going to plug in 2. So 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 1. Okay, notice I am using order of operations. 2 squared is first. Four, and then 2 times 2 is next, and then the subtraction at the end. 4 minus 4 is 0, minus 1, four. then we're plugging in 3, 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 1. Okay, so this would be 3 squared is what? 9, 2 times 3. So 9 minus 6 is 3, minus 1 is 2. Okay, last mm -hmm. one of these, 8 squared minus 2 times 8 minus 1. 8 squared, 64, 2 times 8. 64 minus 16 is 48 minus 1. That's pretty quick. more plugging stuff in. Evaluate x equals 3, y equals negative 4, and z equals 2. 2x two plus 3y equals minus 16. Okay, so on this one we have three different numbers to plug in. x is 3. You could just hit times 3. I'm going to put parentheses because it makes it look neater. Uh, y is negative 4. Is two, I think. That's it. If you plug that in your calculator, should be no problem. Some of you might be faster without a calculator. Two times three is six. Three times negative four is negative twelve. Negative six times two. Negative twelve. Six plus negative twelve. Like minus 12, negative 6, minus 12. Oh. Got some adding skills here. Number 11, 5x squared plus 2x plus 7. Well, there's only one variable on this one, is x, and x is 3. So it's 5 times. 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 7. So what do I do first? Order of operations. 3 squared first. Uh, exponents first. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. 2 times 3 is 6. So 45 plus 6 
is 51 plus 7. All right, uh, this one always confuses people. Please pay attention on number 13 so I don't have to teach you number 12. Okay, the formula for the distance that a dropped object falls when air resistance is negligible. Do you guys know what negligible means? Basically nothing. It means basically nothing, virtually nothing. Uh, is D equals 1 half GT squared. Okay, so they're saying when you drop a object, whatever, this tells you how far the object's gonna fall. And the, uh, what do you think D stands for? Distance. This will be like our answer. What do you think, well, what do you think T stands for? Oh, time. Time. You, it's almost always time. So how far the ball drops or whatever is going to depend on how much time has passed, right? Like the more time that's passed, the farther the ball will drop. What do you think G stands for? Gravity. Gravity. Uh, so, like one of the problems is Earth's gravity, one problem is Moon's gravity, so it's different. Stuff falls slower on the Moon, you guys probably know that. Um, anyways, um, so these are the two numbers we're going to plug in, and that'll tell us how far the ball dropped or whatever. Okay, anyways, if we keep reading the directions, it says find the distance each object falls in three seconds when it dropped. So what are we gonna do with three seconds? Times three. So where's the three gonna go? T. T. And it matters because this number is squared and this number is not. So we do need the three to be over there. Whoops. Um, and then on the problem it says, on the moon, G equals five and one third feet per second. So that's the gravity on the moon. Five and one third. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Anyway, the time is three. So that, that's it. I will do it. Now, if I had to do this by hand, which I kind of am, it's, Change this to improper, this would be three times five plus one is 16 thirds, and three squared is nine. And then these reduce, just because I'm doing it by hand doesn't mean you have to, but 16 and two reduces to eight. So it's eight times three, 24 over one, so it's just 24 feet. All right, so just plug stuff in. Part of the stuff you plug in is in the directions. It says three seconds in directions. All right, 15, simplify. Have I? Called on people yet? Yeah, I called on Kinsey at the beginning, but that was it, right? Time to start calling. All right, Rain or Claire? Who wants number three? Rain. simplify that. I don't want to write all that down. Uh, two two yes, no, you're right. You got the right idea. Okay. I'm just copying the problem now. Minus six. Minus six in. All right, go ahead. What were you saying? In. So this would be 1 minus 4 minus 6. Where did the 2 add? Did I copy it wrong? It's an N. Lost my place. 
Okay. So one minus four minus six, plug that in the calculator, right? is negative nine. And then what? Shh, shh, shh. Then what? Two in plus one in. Three in. And it's positive, so that would be plus three in. I got three in minus nine. Does that count to? Okay. Is no. this? She said she put this. Is this the same answer? Yes. The answer is yes. As long as these are both positive and these are both negative. Or minus. Yeah, these are the same. So when we're grading, that's kind of important to know that. These are both correct. I got to 25 with the other class. But that's because they have a Wednesday schedule tomorrow. Maybe 21. We'll do one less. We'll do 23. What? We'll go 23 today. All right, 27. 2A minus 4 plus 3B. So they're going to become a minus. Because the minus is on everything in parentheses. So yeah, that'll become a minus as well. Okay, now what can we do? Right. And that would be a 2a minus 4a. I gotta look right in front of it. So 2a minus 4a is no, negative 2a. Oh, hold on. I didn't look over here. There's also minus 6a. So this minus this is negative 2a. Negative 2 minus 6. Negative 8a. And this guy just kind of stays there. Good job. Draven, this will be yours. Yeah. Or X. Savvy had this one in the other class. She did pretty well. So. one we'll do today because it's just long it's big can i like skip for now no uh no what do you think we should do first <laughs> it's okay if it's wrong the okay can we do anything inside the parentheses no. no so what else should we do then Okay, kind of what Allison did first. We can, like, distribute that. Ah, uh, yes, I agree. So what will, <laughs> what will that become? Uh, negative 8x plus <coughs> Right. Okay, before we get out here, we'll, we're still in the brackets, so let's clean that up some more. Like like right, so 4x minus 8x. <laughs> Plus nine, plus eleven. Okay, now that's all we can do inside, right? Now if I copy down what was outside here. Okay, there's a minus right here too. So what are we gonna do with that guy? It's not a question. It's not a question, right? 
Yeah. Oh, well, that's rude. Shh. All right. So kind of the same thing. Shh. Hush. So what will this become? Yeah, positive. So plus 4x and minus 11y. Okay. It's kind of a repeat of what you did at the beginning. And then what? Combine like that. Yep. So 1x plus 4x and 3y minus 11y. some algebra skills. All right, now, before I forget, because this was screwing up the other class, I guess we haven't seen this enough, so I need to talk about it. So, I know this is kind of a duh question, but okay, what's 2x plus 3x? Okay, now here's where the other class was, I guess we haven't seen this enough. What's 3x squared plus 2x squared? Okay, Rain was right. She said 5x squared. Okay, you do not add the exponents. That's only when you multiply. I don't know if you guys remember like chapter one and all that stuff. This is when you add the exponents, like x times x. For this one, it's more like this one. Three of these plus two of these equals five of those. Does that make sense? Three of these plus two of these equals five of these. So the exponents do not change when you're adding these. All right, does 3x squared plus 2x add together? Do these two go together? No. No, they are not like terms. So if this was like all you had, there's nothing you could do. It doesn't simplify. These simplify, these simplify, but notice the exponents don't change when you're adding and subtracting. All right, that was for number uh, 14 and 16 and 18, they all have an x squared over there. <clears throat> so, all right, let's do a couple more. 2 thirds y minus 3 fourths. So basically on 21, I just copied it down. What they're saying is um, they solved the equation and they got y equals 1 half. We're supposed to say, did they get it right or not? No. So how can we tell if they got it right or not? Right. She said you substitute your answer. By the way, this is a very important trick when you're taking a test on Friday because you can check all your answers and see if they're right. So we're plugging it in, and if, it, if these two sides are actually equal, we know we got it right. So what does it mean, 2 thirds y? What does that mean? 2 thirds times a half, right. Okay, this, it's kind of a pain to do this by hand, uh, this over here, but I'll go ahead and do it. You could just plug this part in your calculator and see if it equals that part. But by hand, those would cancel out. You get one third minus three fourths. You would need a common denominator of 12. If I did that wrong. Let's multiply by four. And that by three. Four twelfths minus nine twelfths is negative five twelfths. So did it work? Yes. Yeah, that's what it was supposed to be. So yeah, they got the answer right. So we're just supposed to put yes. They did it right. All right, 23 will be our last. I think that's over halfway, maybe. Yeah, it's about time. Y plus 0.38 equals 8.7. Okay, yesterday we were getting rid of decimals, but that's not necessary most of the time. And I wouldn't get rid of the decimals on this one. So let's see, Luke, what would I do to solve this on 23? And this is where you need to especially start showing your work, this section. 
solving equations. What would I do to solve this horizon? No. Okay, we gotta get y by its no, we gotta get y by itself. So how do I get rid of Huh? No. Okay, actually we did learn a trick to move the decimal yesterday. But it's not necessary to solve this. So if we had an added value, how do we get rid of an added value? Subtract. So and if you do that to one side, then you do it to the other. So minus 0.38. So 8.7, anyway, it's like uh, 